my sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles and welcome to my channel. I'm wearing my dove blouse that I've shown you on my last vlog. And today I want to show you a hack. So I'm not gonna talk about the sizing or do a pattern review that you can go and hop on to my latest vlog if you want to see that, if you've missed it. And you can see the details of this lovely top, the dove blouse by Megan Nielsen. So, uh, months and months ago, I had planned to clone this ready-to-wear top that I bought in Chile in a shop. It was not cheap. Um, I love the print. And it's got uh, a sleeve with a cold shoulder detail, just a round neckline. It's a very simple top. Whenever I wear it, I get lots of compliments. I've worn it to film some vlogs and I also get comments that they like my top. So it was always in my mind to clone it. So when I got this pattern and folded it and started it, putting it together on paper to clone it, I figured out it was in no way, shape or form possible to clone because, I mean, it looks lovely. You can't tell like when I'm wearing it all the flaws, but it's off grain, it's all crooked. The, the side seams don't match. I mean, I can't clone this. I can just wear it and enjoy it and ignore the flaws but it's not a clonable pattern. So I decided to use the Dove blouse, so this one, and use version one that has a normal sleeve just up to the elbow. Use that sleeve pattern to hack it into a more flared sort of sleeve, but shorter, and then alter it to make it a cold shoulder. Now, um, I'd been traveling around with a piece of fabric for years. Um, this is a refashion, by the way. <laughs> Uh, in New Zealand, um, there's like a big chain store, department store thing called Farmers. And at the end of each season, they had these crazy sales. Like, I found a rack that had things that were so, so reduced. And if you'd been going there uh, frequently, you would have seen those same clothes at normal prices. And then the sale, and then the sale of the sale of the sale, you know. <laughs> so there was one particular pleated skirt that I'd been eyeing because the print was just calling to me. Um, when I found it on that sale of a sale of a sale, it was mega reduced. I don't think I paid more than $10 for it. And it was a size tiny, <laughs> I can't remember what size. Very small waist with a pleated chiffon skirt with a little lining inside. Uh, so I took apart that waist, you know, and then I had this huge piece of fabric that was like pre-pleated. But being chiffon, you could iron and press it and then the pleats disappeared. So I had a shorter, like it was a short piece of fabric, but pretty wide across. And I wanted to make the blouse out of it. So I had to compromise on some things, add some seams, add some yokes. <laughs> um, because it was super she, I've also lined it with a black chiffon to make it wearable or else it would, you know, I'd have to wear like a cami under it. So there's a lot of difficult stuff I've, I've done to this. Simple blouse to make it harder, but end up looking super nice. I absolutely love how it turned out. So I'm gonna show you and pop in here all the nitty gritty about how I did it. I'm using version one of the just straight sleeve. I've traced it onto another piece of paper. I have marked all the notches that come with the pattern, the double notch at the back, the front, everything. And I just freehand drew a curve there on the top that I'm going to eliminate. So all that, I just freehand drew that and that's actually gonna go. That's not gonna be part of the pattern and that's gonna become the cold shoulder. I've drawn lines about an inch apart where I'm gonna slash and spread. I don't want a huge flared sleeve, but I don't want a slim sleeve like the original. So you can see me placing it there on a paper and then I have my new pattern piece. To make good use of the fabric I have, this is a refashion, <laughs> I've cut a front yoke. I've extended the grain line so I can place it on the fabric properly and not have it all distorted. I've also created a yoke piece on the back. Now these are all freehand, I just drew a line wherever and I'm going to have a yoke piece for the lining, uh, the chiffon lining and the main fabric. Here I've placed it um, onto the fabric, um, you can see I've uh, transferred the, the markings of the notches so I can put it on the blouse properly and keeping the grain line. Now this has seam allowance because I've used the pattern piece from the dove blouse so it's got a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. I have the two yoke pieces and then in there I have the lining and the main sandwiched in between. So it was one continuous stitch 
overlocked so that's how it's going to look when it's nice and pressed and everything everything's closed there and everything is closed in there now i have to attach the front piece uh here using the burrito method i'm just um, going to shove them into the shoulder seams this is the front piece of the blouse um, there is a center front seam there uh, on the original design and i didn't have another option so i did do that there are the darts right there um, they are sort of slanted up um, i did have to lower them a little bit as you saw on my other version the, the simple one so it's the same so for this one i'm lining it with chiffon and i have already uh, cut the identical piece there on the top so on the lining instead of um, doing like a facing or things I'm just gonna use the lining as the facing but I covered a large area there with interfacing as you can see on the lining chiffon it's already been sewn together and the stitched so this has already been finished I've sewn it together I've understitched so the neckline has been closed on the front. Um, there is a little piece there, a little extra seam I had to add on uh, because I didn't have enough fabric lengthwise. But the print is super busy, you can't even tell. Like there, like you can't tell. Here maybe a little bit, but not that much. So my, uh, my struggle now is gonna be treating this piece like one. Uh, so I'm going to do a basting stitch there to close the shoulder seams there and I'm going to have to sandwich this into the back piece So when I sandwich this in there There's a neckline. There's going to be a little raw area there on both sides and What I'm going to do with that once that's all enclosed burrito method style with that raw area I'm going to put bias binding and tuck that under there so the back neckline will be finished by uh, bias binding and the front won't. I'm going to try to show you what I'm doing with the burrito method on the shoulders. Um, I have placed my front and my back pieces right sides together. So I just have one layer of the yoke at the back there. And I have already um, made the front piece like just one piece. You know, you saw me do that. I based it on the top. So I have pinned that there. I've done that on both sides. So this inner yoke here, I'm folding it in and I'm going to just place it on top of there. Now I have to match the arm side area there. I'm going to put it there, hold it together with my fingers. I'm going to go in here, holding that together. I'm going to flip this shoulder that way. And now I have to match this inner yoke with this bit in here. Now I'm going to use the same pins I had used to attach the front pattern piece to the back yoke, but of the main fabric. So I'm using that same thing to pin again. Okay, so you can see that that's been pinned. Now when I flip this, mm. It's going to be closed there and on the other side and I'm going to have some raw piece of neckline at the back here that I'm going to have to sort out later. shoulder seams um, they, it's all enclosed inside everything's really neat I have these raw edges here on the back neckline and I'm going to attach bias binding and then that's gonna be nice and closed now the bias binding is gonna be a bit longer and it'll like pass over onto the front but I'll just sort of hand tack that on there and make it look neat so once this is done it'll be nice and neat here you can see that i have sewn on the bias binding and i've left some overhanging from that uh, shoulder seam there that is what i'm going to fold in afterwards to finish that uh, 
neatly but first I'm gonna go and understitch that um, area there so that the bias binding folds inwards really nicely and doesn't flip out or look messy so I've done that and now you can see I'm folding that little flappy bit in like that and I'm gonna hand tack that down onto the shoulder seam to make that really nice and neat once I've done that um, you can see I've done that on all that side it's already hand tacked I've pinned it all together and then I'm gonna top stitch on top this is how the neckline turned out I finished the whole neckline um, the front there is finished in the normal traditional way <laughs> and then I have the binding there to finish off the back um, it turned out quite neat this area there you can't really tell that there's binding there um, yeah, I just found myself a harder way to do it didn't I but it worked out I have my sleeves here and to finish that edge of the cold shoulder I've cut a strip of bias tape now I can't pass this strip through the bias tape maker because it won't press so I've just sewn it there with a quarter of an inch then folded it under uh, towards the wrong side of the sleeve I put up double you see no that's the wrong side and then I have to sew that um, it's it's fiddly you know chiffon moves everywhere I've <laughs> I've used my um, tools there to keep it straight you know um, and then I've done and that's uh, how I've closed that top there and that area there is going to be uh, my shoulder it's going to be on view you can see it's a really nice finish here I've got the sleeves I've um, sewn the the side seams of the sleeves I've got the back sides pointing up and that's where my uh, shoulder is going to go I have two sleeves here ready um, I've turned them around so you're seeing the right side there I've already hemmed them um, the, the hems are a little bit curved but that's the design uh, the top has been finished with bias binding on the inside as you saw me sewing so basically it's a normal sleeve it's just missing the sleeve cap that you would have and that makes attaching it onto the blouse mega easy because you're basically missing all that uh, part that you have to easy in and everything it's gone so from uh, the bottom there of the arm side you're just gonna attach it like normal I've marked on the inside that's the front that's the back so I don't get confused this is the main body it's all done if I were doing this sleeveless it would be so easy I would just go and put bias binding but I'm going to attach that little sleeve with the cold shoulder detail so um, I've just united these two arm size the main fabric and the lining chiffon fabric and just acted like they're one so I've done a basting stitch there it's really important to be accurate with your cutting because the pieces need to be identical and it's a little bit hard with chiffon I was especially careful to have them be exactly the same I've done that on both sides now about the side seams the main uh, the main fabric is sewn as normal and then the lining um, the seams the seams match so when I wear when I wear this I won't have seams rubbing against me because they're inside there I've attached my sleeves in there uh, the edges are raw now I'm gonna go and overlock the edges um, especially from where the sleeves start sort of around there and then I'm gonna stop there Be this doesn't matter that it's raw on the top because uh, I'm gonna put by binding I have the top of the arm there that's raw I actually searched it because it was unraveling so bad um, so we have a sleeve that starts right there so I'm going to put by binding just up to that point and then I've left a little bit flapping um, I'm going to turn that around and finish that by hand that I need a little bit extra there to fold under so um, yeah I've just pinned you know I always trim my um, bias tape I trim one of them little foldy bits to make the bias tape uh, narrower so I'm gonna go ahead and sew that on with a quarter inch seam allowance and then flip it in and then I'll have a finished shoulder I have put the little piece of bias tape there on that piece of shoulder that was all raw and you can see that that stops right there and it's just where the sleeve starts right there at that same point I've already clipped the, um, you know and now I'm going to fold it in pin it and I'm going to finish 
these little things by hand I'm gonna tuck that in finish that by hand and then I'm gonna do the, the sewing on to the you know sewing the bias tape onto the fabric you can see the inside you can see the little under stitching there up to there and then from there that point is the hardest to get nice and crisp um, inside here is where the interfacing is stuck if you can see that little bit you can see through it this top bit there I finished with bias binding and then those little corners I finished off by hand that's the bias tape I made out of the same fabric for the sleeve I didn't want heavy bias binding on the sleeve uh, I wanted it to flow nicely that's why I made it out of the same fabric and at the bottom <laughs> I did a fake uh, rolled hem so my overlocker does not do that so what I did was pass the overlocker on itself like three or four times and that created that sort of thicker look you know it's not perfect but it does the job and it was the best way to hem this thing at the back you can see the back yoke there where it unites everything's enclosed in there it's all together and how I finished the back lining with uh, bias binding as you saw okay so you've seen how I made it you've seen it inside out when I showed you the details now I have it on you see the the cold shoulder is very discreet and I love that it's just a tiny tiny little piece there um, I prefer these to like those huge like hanging you know I think this is very discreet and actually on this side you can barely see it because my skin color sort of camouflages with the print there. <laughs> so yeah in no way can you see that there's a little yoke at the front to add for the, the missing length here uh, the yoke at the back is there even if it was noticeable I wouldn't mind lots of blouses have yokes you know the, the V neckline is very nice um, as you saw I interfaced the chiffon lining with a big chunk of interfacing like that black thin interfacing but it has something and it's very nicely structured not compared to the the green one that I made so I'll just step back nice and flowy this one is a little bit shorter than the green one because I didn't have length uh, the curved hem and under there is a black chiffon layer that I've um, cut a little bit shorter so yeah the, the sleeves are a bit flared but not so much you know I'm not into huge volume but I didn't want cold shoulder with like a skinny sleeve I made it slightly harder on myself I've been, done a lot of work that was extra to get this but it's basically the cold shoulder v-neck top of my dreams I've been dreaming with this for a long time ever since I bought that ready to wear with the intention of cloning because that's usually why I buy ready to wear sometimes I see a design I'm like I want to have 10 of those but in this case it didn't work and I could recreate it sort of improving it and using a, a pattern you know it fits really well so yeah highly recommend the dove blouse very hackable I'm sure this isn't the last hack I'm gonna make with it because I already know that the body and everything fits I just need to come up with different ways to play with the with the design that's all for now hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like subscribe share and hit the bell so you don't miss all of the things that i do here that might provide you with some sewing entertainment <laughs> see you soon and happy sewing bye